Okay, it's a training day today, and since I'm in Columbus for the Arnold Classic, I'm gonna hook up with Neil Hill and train with him. And uh, I've trained with Neil a few times in the past, so I know that it's gonna be an intense training session. It's gonna be extremely painful. However, I always learn new things from Neil. Now, it's always great to pick a new workout partner every now and again, and I've specifically chosen Neil because I've trained with him before, and I know that he trains very intense. It's always good to find a workout partner that has a lot more knowledge uh, than you, that can bring up your game. If you're choosing a workout partner, try not to go for somebody inexperienced or that's going to bring you down to their level or you know that, that's not serious about their training, that's going to be talking in between sets. You need someone who's focused, someone that's experienced and somebody they can learn from or that you know someone that can motivate you. Anyway, so um, let's get focused, let's get charged and I'll see you at the gym. We're still in Columbus. We've been here since Tuesday. Um, it has been hard, but I've managed to get in every single meal every day. So uh, sometimes that was seven meals, sometimes that was, that was eight meals. So I've been really good with my meal frequency. I haven't missed one, haven't missed a workout. And um, today we're back in the gym. Yesterday was a day off. It was Saturday at the Arnold Classic, which was very busy. So I chose that as my day off. It's Sunday morning and we're back in the gym uh, to get legs. Last night it could have been very easy for me to stay out or go to a, um, one of the after parties, loads of after parties here, but I knew that 7.30 the next morning I was here to train legs with Neil. So instead after the event just went out, had a meal, had my steak meal um, and woke up early this morning to get my breakfast down to really charge myself up for this workout. Neil really likes to work with very high reps when doing legs. It's very intense and uh, we're all going to be feeling sick to say the least. So um, let's get into this workout. I'm starting with a warm up set just to get my legs loosened and get them ready before Neil arrives. We're starting off with leg press, but this will be a lot different than anything we've done in the program so far. Today we're going to do four sets of 85 reps. However, we'll be breaking up those reps into four different variations. We'll do 20 reps with our legs at the bottom of the leg press. Then without racking the weight, we'll move the feet up an inch, do 20 more. Then another inch for another 20 reps. On the fourth and last variation, you'll move your feet to the top of the plate and finish off with 25 reps, which will total your 85. This is extremely challenging and you'll want to be in a right mindset because halfway through you'll probably want to talk yourself out of it. I just like to get focused in such a mindset that I think of a loved one or a family member that's going to get hurt if I don't complete these 85 reps and in the past I've always done it. This was 
really painful and I feel like my legs are going to buckle underneath me. We're going straight into a superset of squats of 20 reps to really obliterate the legs. burn that you get is absolutely immense so it starts with your quads then it works its way around to your hamstrings then you feel the burn in your calves and then when it gets to the soles of your feet then you really know you're, you know, you're on the edge there just absolute failure next up are leg extensions we'll be doing triple drop sets of this exercise and two working sets of 10 to 15 reps this can be a little confusing, but ultimately you want to do three drop sets of 10 to 15 reps each or two full working sets. Following these sets, we'll immediately go into a burnout set of partial reps. With partial reps, you'll want to make sure that you keep your weight-bearing tension on the muscles at all time, which means you do not allow the weight to bottom out, which would allow your muscles to rest. as delightful as eating a scabby cat. When you do those, those last partial repetitions, you want to try and make sure you come back in a fully started position without the weight bottoming on the rack. So the stress is continuously in your upper middle section of your thigh. Because what you don't want to do is go back so the weight stops stagnant on the plate, which obviously straight away will take the stresses away from those muscle groups. And as I say, it's a very partial repetition at the end, just to finish that working set off. Um, as I said, the movement is only between sort of six, six, from four to six to eight inches as you start fatigue, so that movement will get less and less and less. But you've got to make sure that you're in control of the negative part of the rep as much as possible. As, fat, as, as, as far as the speed that you perform those partials is irrelevant as long as you're, you're in control with that movement the full time. Look at the, the burn that you get in your calves. Yeah. In my <laughs> reps, I got the exact same in my quads then. <laughs> exact same. The only downside is that you won't be able to sleep on your front for a couple of days because your quads are so sore. <laughs> and you probably have to use the disabled toilets for about a week. <laughs> So about 10 minutes ago, we just finished our leg workout with uh, Neil Hill. It was uh, very eventful, to say the least. So it's really good to meet up with someone like Neil, you know, if you're going away, if you're traveling, something like that, because it kind of keeps you accountable. Like, I'm sure you were accountable, I was accountable. We had to show up, yeah. even though we only had a few hours sleep, yeah. but it keeps you on track, you know? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, if you guys, you know, with the cameras wasn't here, you know, we, we would have trained, you know, but we wouldn't have really, really wanted to come knowing that we've had about two, three, four hours sleep, you know, the, the, the night before, 
you know, Chris and myself have said for probably for the last sort of three or four days, we've probably been getting about four hours sleep and, you know, busy, busy schedules, etc. You know, but uh, when we go to the gym, we go to the gym to train, you know, we go there to push each other. And that's what you need. You need to push yourself. You know, when you go to the gym, yeah, you, you know, you might feel completely annihilated and destroyed during the workout, but when you actually finish a workout, irrespective of how far you've really taken, you know, your sort of mind in a sense, you do really feel so good in yourself. You feel like you've really accomplished it. You feel like you've sort of, you've done something beyond yourself. That you, you know? shouldn't have done. You'd be, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, during that workout, I was thinking, do you know what? I really don't know if I can get through this workout and I thought I've got to do this because Chris is going to do his next set and he was thinking the same as me. And though I'm obviously fatigued now, I really do feel really, really good about myself. Oh, yeah, feel really good and motivated to push yourself yeah. that much more yeah. when you get back home. Learn my favorite features of body space and how they help me stay on track and achieve success during this transformation. 